Hello, I'm Elspeth Pridham, editor of Studio Magazine, and welcome today to our discussion, Teamwork Makes the Dream Team. So to get to the bottom of what makes a dream team, today I am going to be chatting to interior designer Brian Wolfe of Design by Wolf. Hello, Brian. Just so everyone knows which one's you. Um, <laughs> and we're going to be talking about a specific project. So before we bring in the other members of the discussion, we're just going to have a look at this project. So you've got in your mind what we're talking about later. So hopefully some images are going to come up on the screen now. Now, Brian, who was the client for this? So the client for this particular project was a, an American couple uh, who had relo relocated to London with uh, two young boys, uh, twin boys aged three. Um, uh, as you mentioned, I was the interior designer on the project. I've been working in interior design for over 10 years and I've had my share of good and bad moments, ups and downs, and uh, the downs were ones I was particularly not uh, prepared for. Um, we've had all sorts of problems, our own performance in-house, the performance of contractors and specialist consultants, suppliers, and even the clients that needed marriage counselling more than they needed an interior designer. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's why I think the starting point for every successful project is the client. They need to be as much a part of the team as any of the consultants and contractors they appoint. If you can't align with them early on with the objectives, um, with a clear understanding of how they want to be involved, things won't be smooth sailing. Um, okay, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, so to really get them involved. And for this, you did obviously did the whole house. I mean, we're seeing a lovely nursery there as well. And yeah. this is in London, isn't it? Yes, this is in, in Notting Hill. And it's a, it's a really great example. Um, of a client that had very clear and defined objectives. Uh, it was a whole house refurbishment uh, back to brick uh, and they understood the value of taking advice early on and appointing the right team with the right experience and the right attitude. Okay, that's lovely. I mean, we can see there the sophisticated finish of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, it's great because I'm now going to bring in the other members of the panel who are Lucy Martin of, she's the lighting designer from Light Fantastic yep. and Taz Kiriakou of IDS Automation. So you were doing all the smart home stuff, Taz. Yeah. So I'm going to start off with Brian. Sorry, guys, I will actually, <laughs> you will get a word in at some point today. I'm going to start with Brian, and obviously you've already said um, that pulling the team together starts with the client. Hmm. So I imagine that's a sit down with the client first, is it, before you even bring in these other members of the team? Yes, yeah. So in the same way, I guess the client uh, did their research in uh, appointing an interior designer. We, we came to the table through a referral from a, uh, another client. Um, they had interviewed uh, and met with a few designers. The, the, the pairing... Uh, happened between Design by Wolf and them. Uh, we discussed the brief, the needs, we, we looked at what we wanted to try and achieve for them and how we were going to make the property suit the lifestyle goals and uh, be a family home that would grow with them in the future. Um, and then we looked at what uh, outside um, specialists and consultants we would need to bring in early on to make sure that it was a seamless uh, project. And for this client in particular, um, they were concerned about the timelines um, mm -hmm. they, they wanted to minimise time out of the property, reduce costs involved in renting elsewhere uh, and get back into a home and, you know, and start to enjoy it. Um, and when you were looking for the team, were you looking at people you'd worked, had you worked with Taz and Lucy before? Mm -hmm. I, I had worked with Lucy before. We've done a number of projects and I like the way that she, she had worked. We've worked with other lighting designers as well, but th there seems to be an, a synergy and an energy uh, between Lucy and I that works quite well. Um, documentation has always flowed, uh, contractors have enjoyed working with her. Um, Taz, I had met at uh, an industry event and uh, we clicked and uh, I approached him to get them to tender for, for the project. Um, I was really impressed with the, the quality of paperwork, uh, the attention to detail, the communication. Uh, again, there was an energy and it was sort of fun to, to communicate with Taz. I'm more of a uh, phone call type of person. People, I think, know at this point, if they send me an email, they'll probably get a phone call back in return. <laughs> um, and uh, it, it just sort of, it flowed. And um, I, it's always nice to add new suppliers and have a, a selection of, of consultant suppliers and contractors that you can turn to. Absolutely. Um, it's quite interesting that you mentioned that you met at an industry event as well, because yeah. it does show these networking things yeah, no, really, they, they work. really pay off. And it, it just worked putting, putting everybody together the, the, the principal contractor, Lucy is the lighting designer and, and Taz and his team uh, on the home automation. It, it just worked from, from the outset. 
And sorry, I'm, I mean, obviously I'm not an interior designer, so I might be asking a, a daft question here, but do you all meet up together at some point? Do you pull meetings together and then do you go and meet the client? How do you sort of get that, that relationship started? Um, so, I mean, throughout, throughout the project, there was, there was uh, constant meetups or site meetings uh, for everybody involved. Um, I wasn't necessarily at all of them. There, there would have been points where the home automation and the lighting design would have been communicating together and I didn't need to be involved in the technicalities there. There were points where lighting design and, and, and the electricians on site and the contractor would have uh, meetings and discuss their technical elements and components without my input because we would have already had our, our design meetings relating to the design and the overlay of lighting design and the interior design. Um, Lucy and, and Taz and his team were very good at providing uh, information and documentation and drawings that we could layer onto our in-house interior design drawings and present those to the clients in, in, in one go and um, so that they got a clear understanding of how things wove in with each other and, and, and got a better sense of why they had appointed people very early on in the project. Yes, absolutely. So you took these guys in to meet the clients, so they felt comfortable with them as well. Yes, so they, they, both, they both met the clients at different stages uh, and had a lot of interaction with the clients at the end when it came to uh, setting the, the products up on site for them and giving them training uh, on the, the product, which is key. Oh yes, of course, that's brilliant. Okay, I'm going to bring in Lucy and Taz now. Can you tell me why is it important that you get involved at quite an early stage in a project like this? I'm going to come to you first, Lucy. You know, how important is it that you're brought in sooner rather than later? I think it's absolutely key to be brought in as early as possible um, from a lighting perspective because there is so much to do with linking lighting um, and, and in with the interior, for example, lighting within joinery you know there may be something that hadn't been thought about that as a lighting designer you can see would make a big difference to a space and I think that value added push and persuading people perhaps that something could be improved by adding some lighting you can do that if you start right at the beginning because you know the things are not set in stone so you have an opportunity to create and or affect a job in a positive way. And I'm, I'm a great believer in doing that. Plus, I think from an early stage, you build, you build that relationship. It is so important to build a relationship with, obviously I knew Brian, but the interior designer, you have to be able to respond straight away. And like Brian said, he's a great one for the phone. I'm a great one for the phone because you can make decisions quickly, which means things keep moving on site. It minimizes misunderstanding and, and which means it's more economical. Um, and that continual flow of information and, and especially with your, um, with Taz's role of providing all of the joined up um, sort of building management system. So that's not just the lighting, that was everything else. Um, it, you can make sure that, for example, you don't end up with 50 different plates on a wall in random locations. You know, all of those things are thought about early and it's early means you have choice and, and choice means that the client at the end of the day will get what they want. It's our job, my job, to think about these things for a client. Yeah, that, no, that's that exactly. I mean, we don't know. Do, well, I wouldn't know the first thing about light, as you can probably see by my rather unattractive wall out over here. Uh, Taz, is that the same for you, that you need to be brought in early on in a project like this and not just to come in and have a look and then go away, but to really get into these relationships? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and kind of echoing, I mean, Lucy was spot, was spot on um, and kind of echoing what she's saying. Um, because of what we do, uh, it's not just the lighting, you know, we're thinking about the audio and the video systems, the heating, the cooling, uh, you know, the, the security systems, all of these what we call subsystems are brought in together. And we have to communicate with the designer, with the, uh, with the main contractor, there's a lot of communication between us and Lucy as well uh, to get that lighting right, especially on the, on the, on the lighting keypads once we once we engrave them so um i i constantly bang on to to all of my clients that if you if you you know if you engage um with a client early with the designers early and, and all, the, all the you know the main everyone involved essentially in, on the project um early on um then we can get that brief we can put that 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 design together early on 
because especially with what we do, um, it can have an impact on the spatial design. Um, and just as an, as an example, depending on the amount of technology that we're actually installing in a, in a particular home, in this particular home, there's, there's quite, quite, a, quite a lot of uh, home technology. Uh, we, need to, we need to um, compile that design in, in early on so that we can understand how much space we're actually got, going to need um, to, uh, to, to, you know, to, to implement with, with, you know, within a particular space. So, you know, there's a lot of communication between, you know, Brian and I to understand that, you know, that we've got enough spatial uh, room for the, for the technology. And also from an interior's point of view, ensuring that the technology that we're installing um, is going to be in keeping with, with the actual interior design. Um, so, uh, and all of this kind of happens early on. It's so important to have that uh, in place early on. Uh, because we're just going to have problems later on down the line and it, you know in the, at the end of it it's going to cost the client and the client you know is essentially the most important person in the process so uh, and, and 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 that's why I think um, early engagement is it really is crucial to the process. And, and Lucy and Tess I'll just come back to you first Lucy and then same question to you Tess how much are you actually on site? As much as needed but I think the key is to be proactive Mm -hmm. If you've got that early communication and you built those bridges with everybody involved. And for me, that means particularly the electrician. If I've got that uh, relationship going, it means they know they can call me. I'm So I can come to site whenever required. But proactively just rocking up is always a good thing. Just to check that everything is going fine, that there are no problems. And I think that if you're passionate about what you do, your love of it, it's, it's, it's a really easy way to run a project is to make sure you're always there. Customer service is absolutely key. Obviously that's a benefit for the client, but being there and working with people and knowing that there is that communication there is no substitute for that so as much as possible but not you know not sort of um for the for just for the love of it there's always a purpose for it but if you've got an eye on the project it means it goes smoothly mm -hmm. and is that the same for you Tess do you go on to absolutely um, you know, main contractors can sometimes can move they can move quite quickly so um you know and if you start closing up walls or ceilings and we miss, um, we miss something, uh, then it can be a problem later. So um, I'd rather spend more time on site ensuring that all the elements that we're, where we're controlling are in place as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, spending less time on site and, and, and missing something and then having a problem further down the line. So yeah, absolutely. Like we said, you know, as much as we need to, but uh, it's again, it's about communication. And we were constantly, you know, Brian and I and Lucy, we, we will spend, you know, time on the phone. Uh, I'll be speaking to the main contractor too, just to see where they are, we, you know, every, every week and, you know, where they're going to be the following week. Um, and, and if we needed to be on site, then, then we will be, because um, it's important to, to make sure that we're, you know, filling in all the gaps where, where we need to be. Communication is obviously completely key, and I think it's very interesting how much you three talk about talking and are using the phone, not using emails. I think we've all got a little bit stuck on using emails, and as you as you say, there's a delayed reaction then, isn't there? So just really talking to each other, and I guess for you, Brian, it's a real trust element that you've brought this team in, mm. and they need to be. I mean, just talking to you lot, you obviously all are as passionate as each other, that they need to be as enthusiastic about this project mm. as you are. Yeah, uh, it, and that was, I mean, that's why this this particular project and this team uh, works so well together. There was a similar level of energy, even though the contractor on site uh, and this contract was, or, or project was completed uh, during the, the first round of uh, our COVID lockdown. Um, but there was there was a, a real enthusiasm and a, and a drive from all parties to to get this over the finish line. And I think just to add to the the points that Lucy and Taz made, um, the communication at the early on is, is vital for I, I think two main reasons for the client. One, it helps them understand the budgets because it's it's the budget allocation for the lighting and the home technology. It has a massive impact on the overall um, budget. It also uh, plays down into the, the scope of works for the, the contractor and, and his electricians and plumbers on site. If the product specifications change, if the level of wiring, number of circuits, the type of wiring changes, uh, it's going to impact on his budget. So everybody has to have time to react to that and adjust uh, so that the client can make informed decisions. But also the client needs uh, time to understand how they're going to use the house, to be talked, for it to be talked through with them 
to understand how they are going to, to use a particular room, what type of light settings or audiovisual um, requirements they're going to need, um, where the panels are going to, to be, where, where the, where's the headboard going to be in the master bedroom? Is it against the wall? Is it floating in the middle of the room on a, on a floating headboard wall? How are they going to use that? What side of the bed is he sleeping at? What side of the bed is she sleeping at? who's reading, where, where's the security panic alarm going? Do they want it hidden behind a piece of furniture? Do, do they want it visible? Where, you know, th there's a whole lot of things that need planning very early on because they're very costly to implement and change uh, later down the, uh, down the road in the project. Yeah, no, that's, that. so again, everybody just being involved. Now, obviously things do change. Nothing is, per well, I don't know, Brian, perhaps your projects are completely perfect from start to finish, but things do change. Yeah. And one of the thorny subjects is quite often budget. So let's just create a scenario that Lucy's been in, talked to the client, they've now discussed something and it's going to cost a bit more than they thought. And they want to take budget away from something else. Brian, this comes back to you, doesn't it? Then trying to manage your team. If you had to go back to Taz and say, well, now I need you to save yeah. some costs. Well, I think any client surveillance, if, if you if you if you say, okay, well, something's got to give. If you want this extra special lighting system, what are you willing to sacrifice? Are we taking the air conditioning out of one of the floors? Are we specking down the, the wardrobe? specifications and taking out the internal lighting out of the wardrobes, for example, are we taking away uh, particular bathroom fixtures and fittings uh, and, and going for something uh, or value engineering that so that we are going for something a little more economical. Um, but I think most clients know that nothing is for free. So if, if they want to reduce the budget, when it's explained to them in black and white, then they understand, well, something's got to give or they just don't reduce the budget. Yeah. And, and also, I think I was touching on how do you then manage within your team if you're having to snatch a bit of budget from somebody else? Um, it, I, I don't view it as sort of snatching. The budgets are set fairly early on. I, I would go back to the clients and let them do the snatching. Um, okay. We've already negotiated the contracts. We'll have negotiated yeah. the budgets with uh, a, home, a home automation company, the lighting, our... our fixtures and fittings suppliers or FF&E specifications uh, with our contractor, um, they'll, they'll have been negotiated fairly aggressively early on. So there isn't much room for negotiating them later down the road. It, it really is a case that we have to re-specify or value engineer. Okay. I do need to bring the client in at that point to say, okay, these are, we can value engineer and we can move the budgets, but something's got to give. So what are you willing to compromise on? Are you willing to forego on the, on the marble for the second and third ensuite bathrooms and, and let's go for a nice Italian ceramic tile instead? Um, but, but realistically, the client is in charge of sort of driving, driving that. Element. OK, fine. So that keeps that relationship yeah. amongst amongst your team yeah. going well. Now, obviously, we've we've established what you need from your team, Brian. When you're pulling a team together, you need complete trust. Don't you want communication? And you've said that sort of flow of response and people going on site. Taz and Lucy, what do you need from the interior designer? If you're on a, obviously, this project did go very well and this team worked well together. What was it that? that Brian provided that, that made it go well for you? I'll shove this at you first, Taz. Well, um, for us, it's crucial to have um, the elevations, um, the joinery uh, for TV positioning, um, the keypad locations, I guess, you know, there's, there's communication there with, with, uh, with Lucy as well. Um, but es essentially for us to be able to put a design together, uh, we would need um, drawings and in those drawings will be the lighting circuits, lighting keypad positions, the speaker positions um, uh, and also uh, the, the main central uh, location for where, where where all of our equipment is going to be. Uh, so I, I, get, I guess the most important thing initially for us is drawings. Mm -hmm. And Lucy what about you, what do you need from him or what any interior you, designer? From, from an interior designer as much information as possible um, the more information that's available, the better any lighting design is going to be. But then it's down to me to be able to ask the questions, to draw the information out. It's as important for me to know about the client, everything from their nationality to, um, a, you know, a rough idea of what, what area do they work in, just to build that picture. And Brian is brilliant at 
feeding down all of that information, their personal likes, their dislikes. So that's all the kind of emotive stuff that helps build the picture of what you need to deliver. He's very also very good with providing the technical stuff. So the drawings, the joinery, um, and thirdly, the energy to drive. Um, We've seen the energy here, haven't we? <laughs> loads of so much. <laughs> at any time of, of the day or the night usually because when something needs to be decided you kind of need to get you need to do it like and that is why you can keep a job on time on schedule and on budget and it's entirely possible to do that with the majority of projects if you've got a, a, a driver an interior designer who drives like Brian it's passion and energy and that's that's got to underpin everything otherwise you can have as many drawings as you want but it, trying to inject some soul into any project and to give that client that final result requires everybody to, to it is it's like making a cake you know the ingredients get good quality ingredients, make sure the chef knows what he's doing, you're gonna get yourself something really great to taste. That's what we're delivering to the client and that's what somebody like Brian can do by being that driver. No, that's that's Thank really you. interesting. So just as much as you need to have the team, you need to be driving that team, Brian. So that is this, that's the position there. Yeah. Um, so I just, I'm looking at a window here and I'm getting really funny shadows on my face. I'm very sorry about that. I'll try and sit still. Um, Brian, so taking you back to the beginning a little bit, I just wanted to ask when you are pitching to the clients, I mean, obviously they've already taken you on. Hmm. Do you bring these guys in with you or Lucy, for instance, if you've done your lighting plans, are you happy to then hand that over to Brian to present or do you feel you need to talk direct to the client? Um, I, I'm always very happy to present to the client and a lot of the time, the joy of working with a private client or it is to be able to have that bond with them. You build the uh, trust. And a, a lot of the time they go, uh, sometimes you might have to persuade them around. Um, uh, but, but if you feel very comfortable with something and you know that you, you're taking them, that's, your, that's the value added. That's why you're doing the job for them to deliver something. But I think that um, it's, uh, if you've got somebody who is heading up that team and they know the client is really well and the client knows that they can, there's one form of, uh, of communication. So Brian feeds everything back into the client. So it's a bit like having a single project manager who just, you, as a client, you talk to one person. So it doesn't overwhelm them because the whole process can be so overwhelming and they don't necessarily want to hear from six different trades on site or you know because they want the joined up they want the um implication of x and y and that's why if you've got a strong um central fulcrum you know the wheel keeps spinning and that's why you know brian needs to sit in that position and but it can work i can work equally with um uh directly with clients but with brian he's always on it you know, so it's it's I can feed back into Brian all the time. And I know that that information is being fed back to the client. OK, that's interesting. I mean, I'm going to say an awful thing now, and this isn't kind of probably the right word for it, but it's a matter of not being too precious, isn't it? So you are happy to hand over your thoughts as long as you trust the interior designer that they're going to present. what. This is not saying. an industry in which you want to be precious about things uh, because the, because the key is you're working for the client. You've got to yeah. deliver what the client wants. And for um, if I knew that if, if Brian had any questions or queries or, or worries, I know he would come to me. Um, sometimes that doesn't happen. So then I have to stand up to the mark and maybe then speak to, you know, get back in touch with an interior designer or an architect and say, look, do you realise the implication of what you would like to do? And perhaps there is an alternative way of doing it to improve the final the final result. So yes, um, as trust and and knowing that the whole team cares about what they're doing i think if you care that the client's going to get what you want to deliver then you do put yourself out there and say okay or uh, this is a good thing to do or yes i take your point you might have you know i'm wrong about that um yeah no no room for 
for being um, for being precious in this role. Okay, Thank you. Brilliant. Um, and just come back to you, Brian. Obviously, we've got these guys here today. We talk about the lighting design and the home automation. Who else would fit into your dream team? I imagine the contractor is the, yeah, is the so other main principal contractor. Uh, any specialist trades and specialist renderings on the wall, decorative works, your joiner. Who, I mean. Uh, on this particular project, we would tender with three joiners and um, it wasn't necessarily the cheapest joiner who got the work. It was the one that we were confident that would fit best within the, the scope of works and the project team that was already put in place. Um, air conditioning specialists, security specialists. Um, yeah, it just, it, the list goes on. It, it really just depends, it's project to project. Um, I think one of the important things maybe to, to, to go back to on what Lucy just said, you know, I've worked with Lucy on previous projects before and she has presented directly to the clients. This project was slightly different. It was done during our, our COVID lockdown, uh, the first, first one. Um, and uh, we were trying to minimize the touch points for the clients, but also the client was very clear in setting their objectives early on. They wanted one point of contact. They wanted one client representative. They, they understood the value in seeing the whole journey being presented to them rather than each specialist coming in and, and, and presenting their element because there was no way of them understanding how it overlaid with something else. So every time we would present an idea or a concept, it was a whole idea or, or a concept with all of the layered information from Lucy and from Taz and from the contractor and our specialist decorative um, uh, teams so that they got an overall picture and then there was an overall budget and they could see the implications of, of, of choosing one thing over the other. Um, and I think that's the, it's it's really important um, that it, that is the case that you you set the objectives. Do they want one point of contact? Do they are they happy or do they want to uh, meet and be presented um, to by each of the specialist trades? Uh, and it's sort of setting that expectations at the outset mm -hmm. means it will. I guess that just comes with experience, doesn't it? Yeah. Realizing that people want things in different ways. Because I think when you were saying that, I thought, well, of course you only want one point of contact. Yeah. But I guess there's some people who are really perhaps into the home automation and would really like to sit down with Taz and and, and pick his yeah. brains personally. And they, they do. They do that uh, really heavily for both Lucy and Taz at the very end of the project when they're mm -hmm. explaining the system and how to use it explaining their after ser after sales service or after install service packages. And uh, I sort of hand over to, to, to those teams at that point and say, well, my job is done. You now have to maintain the system that's been installed, do the upgrades. And and, um, and one of the other, I guess, important things is if, if, um, if they aren't presenting directly to the client, they need to present to me and I need to understand in detail. So having someone like Lucy and Tass who are very capable at, at demonstrating and explaining the systems to me means that I can confidently go to the client and do their designs and their, their specifications justice. Um, and you know, I guess advice that I give to other interior designers that are looking at putting a team together would be make sure you ask the questions that the client would like to ask you um, so that you're, you're ready uh, with those answers. Yes, yeah, and again, that is experience, isn't it? Because the more experience you have, and as you say, you've been signed for 10 years now and done some fantastic projects, that you know the kind of questions that are going to be asked. I mean, obviously, this was a particularly tricky one. It, uh, it's a beautiful property, but you were doing it during lockdown. In summary, why do you think that this worked particularly well? Why do you think the team on this one just, you just got it right this time? Um, I think it's, it's the energy and the professionalism of everybody involved. Everybody was was uh, was driven to hand over a successful project. Um, everybody, I think, enjoyed working with each other. Um, there was what I would call a lot of banter, <laughs> um, <laughs> more in person or, or phone conversations than there were reams and reams of emails uh, and email mm -hmm. exchanges. Um, the principal contractor uh, that was appointed was really. Uh, hungry to um, to demonstrate his capabilities and was re really stepping it up and delivered on time uh, mm -hmm. at a very difficult uh, time globally. Um, and I think I, I think that's probably one of the, the main reasons that it's worked. Mm -hmm. well. And Taz and Lucy, do you have anything to add to that as to why this project you felt went quite smoothly? Shall I start with you, Taz? Well, um, I think. Uh, a lot of what, what the guys have said, I mean, it, it is down to collaboration of fusing our expertise together. Um, and, it, and despite the circumstances, it just came together so well. Um, and and um, 
you know, I think what Brian did really well is, is uh, you know, I mean, I'll give you an example. Technology itself is, I think there's a lot of people who, who uh, they're kind of afraid of technology. Um, you know, they think, you know, is it going to work? You know, are we going to have issues? Um, and there's this kind of misconception about it. Um, but technology should uh, work seamlessly for the client. Um, and when we're, when I was, you know, constantly in discussions with Brian, he was really he, one thing I noticed about Brian actually from when we first met um, at the industry event uh, was he he was always asking the right questions, and it really it struck a chord because he really understands what what is required and what what we what we need from him and vice versa in order for things to come together. So um, I think it's so important for whoever's leading that the, the, the way you know leading the project to have a very good understanding. And I think Brian will be clearly demonstrated that. And I, and I think that was quite a crucial part um, of, of things coming together nicely, as well as everyone else and having that energy and having that um, that uh, that relationship and, and understanding between, between uh, you know, uh, contractors. Um, I, I think that, that that definitely added to it. And it was, um, and it, you know, like I said, despite the circumstances, it came together beautifully. So I'm really happy with it. The fact that you guys were all smiling, it was obviously a pleasure to work on. Yeah. I think, yeah, there's a certain element of, um, you could even call it fun. You know, <laughs> I, I think if you if you uh, are enjoying your, your, your role and, 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 and your profession, I, I think it makes it very easy. But I think that one of the key things is, is uh, the vision. So, so Brian's vision was very clear. And that makes things, yes, all projects all change as they move along and the ability to adapt and jump and make sure that you can uh, meet all, all the demands for answering questions and delivering the right kit and um, making sure that it's all just so comes from a vision. And, and Brian's vision is very clear and that makes my job and I think all our jobs really straightforward and that, that, that there is a joy in being able to work as this team that is enjoying themselves uh, and knowing that they're doing a, a good job and that the client is really happy with the with the result and if you don't start out with that clear vision it generally ends up as a bit of a pickle so you know Brian's vision what can I say well, certainly we've seen the pictures and it is such a fantastic home and I'm assuming Brian the client were delighted with it I can't see why they absolutely yeah. wouldn't be yeah. And just so one final question to you. So we've got a couple of minutes on the clock. Um, this worked really well, despite what you're up against. It's a beautiful result. It's a beautiful property. You guys all re work really well together. Now you've got this formula for the dream team. Are, is it possible to now just do that on every project or do you think it just fell together particularly well this time? I mean, it comes down to the client again. I think the client is the starting point of that dream team. And if you have uh, a client that understands the value that specialists, uh, specialist consultants can bring to the table early on, then it will go a lot more smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, you're always going to have clients that want to, to challenge you or to stack things up in a slightly different way. It's not to say that it won't be as smooth or as enjoyable, um, but I think it really, it's, it's client-led. Uh, and that's how I approach my design. It's client-led design. Our, we don't have an in-house style. I don't impose my style on the client. It is my job to go in and interpret their needs uh, and, and feed that back to them in, in design and in, in use of space and in the technology that we, we bring into the, the property. Um, I definitely was working on projects with Lucy and Taz and the principal contractor again and hope that it will go as smoothly. Um, but I mean, there's no way of knowing how a, a client is going to to play their part or, or fulfill their role in the project in advance. Well, I think yeah. the, the foundation is there, um, yeah. you know, so, you know, we, we understand each other, we know each other, we, um, and we collaborate well. So um, it's definitely a good starting point. Um, but like Brian said, um, it is client driven. So it depends how they, uh, what kind of curveballs they'll, they'll throw at us. Um, but I'm sure we, we can, we can tackle them.
yeah and like you say you've got the trust now you've got the communication yeah. which are the two big things and and brian's got the drink trolley so you know it's all gonna, <laughs> gonna, and gonna go go to bring the site to meet me <laughs> <So>. <laughs> okay that's fantastic i want to say thank you i really enjoyed that time has gone so quickly i thoroughly enjoyed that so i hope everybody else has as well so i want to say thank you very much to taz kiriaku from ideas automation lucy martin from like fantastic and of course brian wolf from Designed by Wolf, and that's all from us. Thank you and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.